Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Before I go any further, Sir Leo here wanted to join me to wish our Libra sun signs a happy, happy birthday. And all the best to you on your next trip around the sun. Say happy birthday. That's what you came here for just two seconds ago. Say hi, say hi. Oh, don't be shy. Welcome cross watchers and to those of you who are new, uh, happy to have you join us. Come in the comments, say hello, let me know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, so this is um, probably gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try to get more readings out, but I'm in the path of, of a hurricane, Hurricane Helene. So I'm doing this reading, jumping in right now to get Libra up and then hopefully uh, I'll have a little bit um, of a window tomorrow to maybe I can knock out Scorpio and Sag, but I don't know. This storm system is moving fast, so we'll see. But happy, happy, joy, joy for our Libra suns. Yeah. And then we have the new moon in Libra next week. I'll be doing a special reading for that as well. So wishing all beautiful things for our Libra babies. Okay. <clears throat> I'm pulling from Divine Master's Oracle. Let's get you a Divine Master message. Excuse me, sir. That does not belong to you. No. It doesn't belong to you. I understand. You want it? It doesn't belong to you. Oh, somebody else got this divine mission. No, 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 no. Okay. I know it looks like so much fun. <laughs> to all cool divine mission, enlightened action, make choices from the heart. You know who else I think got this Taurus. I want to say it was Taurus. I want to say it was make choices from the heart, I think. And you are both co-ruled by you. Are, you are the two signs ruled by Venus. I'm pretty sure it was Taurus. I might be wrong, but beautiful message. Um, divine mission here. Action from the heart. How perfect. Yes. So let that be your guidance, your divine master comes through with your divine mission. Enlightened action from the heart. So this is a different spread. Um, it's a little more shadow focused, just gonna give you that 411. Um, and we're looking at, since we came through the full moon in Pisces, we're moving toward your new moon in Libra. We're dealing with eclipse season, south node is, past right we're looking at what we need to release from the past um i thought it would be helpful to look at lessons from past relationships maybe within the relationship you're dealing with any baggage you're kind of holding on to what needs to be released what's blocking you what do you need to forgive and what is your self-love focus okay so that's this spread i'll uh, pull the cards walk you through it then we'll clarify right? So here's your lesson, <laughs> okay? What's the lesson from past relationships or maybe even in the one you're here to watch about? Um, yeah, heartache, heartbreak, maybe over and over and over and over and over. Baggage, what, what are you potentially carrying around from all of this? It's like, what the heck? The, um, uh, the, the Page of Swords has curiosity built in. It, it tends to be looking for clues, like what is happening here is sort of what I'm getting. The baggage is, I don't understand. So there's no evolution. There's no growth from it. Always staying in that sense of, am I missing something? Um, what needs to be released? Interesting. Maybe a part of this queen of cups in reversed energy we're over identifying with the empath over identifying with the um 
part of the Queen of Cups can become a little bit of a doormat, right? So open, so... Here's where we go. Make choices from the heart, yes. But we can't over-identify with it. So there's a part here where the Queen of Cups can become enmeshed. If you're not really familiar with the construct of enmeshment, you might want to look that up um, because it's where we sort of bleed into someone's stuff a bit too much. Their pain becomes our pain. Their darkness becomes our darkness. Their issues become our issues. And this happens a lot. Um, it can be something we've also brought with us from childhood. If we, you know, had parents that often were very enmeshed in our own lives. So just think about that because we're looking what, about, at what we need to release and let go of from past relationships that tend to cause us heartache. And we're sitting here with baggage saying, what the heck is going on here? I'm clueless. And so it may be some process of enmeshment that we need to release. And also the boundaries that we need to put in, in place of it. Block, what's blocking you either from um, establishing something, uh, better boundaries in this connection, or maybe uh, blocking you from finding new love. Hmm. This page of wands keeps coming through in each of these readings, and I'm seeing it as um sort of uh, friends with benefits energy something that is a little too superficial that doesn't really evolve so we'll look at that in the clarifiers i've been off a couple times in interpreting this so i'm gonna sort of stick a pin in it what do you need to forgive <laughs> the other the other page there it is we have three pages now just so you know so there is sort of something that stays stuck at a certain level it doesn't really grow and evolve and mature um and so this is a card that uh, almost seeks forgiveness right the page of cups it is a message from the heart it's something that seeks for it's a message of love or apology um, so what do you need to forgive? Maybe yourself. Yeah. And then the self-love, um, what do you need to work on for your own self-love? Well, in the three of cups, I'm kind of feeling it as a focus on joy, a focus on, um, kind of, seeking out those people that bring out the best in you, that know your value, that can kind of um, that you remember the good times rather than the bad. So maybe a focus on friendship, right? We're looking at self-love, so you want to do loving, joyful things. The Three of Cups is a celebratory card. It's a, it is in general, and I'm not looking at it in terms of a specific relationship right now. We're focusing on what do we need to release, and if we're looking at things that have been really difficult and painful, if you're gonna be focusing on self-love, what, what will coax you out of the doldrums is like maybe girlfriends or maybe those social situations that will remind you of who you are at your core and get you back in the game of life in a positive more joyful way so i'm going to lead with that and it could change because i'm just giving you my general impressions the clarifiers give us the details and the nuances here we go three of swords yeah Things hurt, people walk away, it all comes crashing down, and then it's like dark night of the soul, over and over and over and over. Yeah. I don't think it's you that walks away either. 
I almost feel as if part of the lesson, since we have the hermit from the bottom of the deck, so if you're new to the channel, when I'm pulling from the bottom of the deck, I'm accessing your unconscious awareness or something that's playing out behind the scenes. In this case, either way, it's something you can't see. So with the hermit being in your unconscious awareness, it's telling me that it's something that you don't have a lot of insight around. Um, it's, it, there's a lack of introspection. There's a lack of insight in this situation that kind of keeps playing out. Um, people walking away, things falling apart, and then this dark night of the soul is um, coming at your expense because you haven't really um, had a chance to say, wait a minute, what's this about? So the hermit here, and that's why we get the, I, I don't have a clue as to what's happening, um, which is the baggage, right? So that would sort of suggest that maybe part of what's really needed is maybe finding in your self-love the circle of trusted people that you can explore what this is about like you know trusted people that you can sit with those best besties and confidants sisters if you have them you know people that are really close that you can say maybe i'm not looking deep enough or close enough i need some help because it's not easy to look at ourselves and to say this is what this this happened in this relationship. This happened in this relationship. I never sort of see it coming. I kind of feel like the rug gets pulled out from under me. The pain is unbearable. It's kind of hard in the midst of that agony to be introspective, right? Who does that? Um, that's what therapy's for. And like, who has the time for that? So, and I'm saying that I, honestly, I, <laughs> I am a, I have worked for many years as a psychotherapist. So I know that's what you all say. Um, so, and then we have the baggage of, and I'm clueless. I, I, I really honestly don't know. So let's see the baggage potentially that you're carrying around. Right. Where's my marriage? Where's my beginning of life partnership where's my joy where's my celebratory beginnings right where's my person coming in on horseback to sweep me up off my feet where's my reconciliation and somebody coming in to ask for my hand in marriage where's my right why am i not manifesting that thing it seems like the baggage is that you don't understand why this is happening um, or why it has happened. And it may have happened more than once for some of you because general reading, not a private reading. So take it as it resonates. Yeah. On some level, you're not, you're not able to see what, what has been happening, why it's been happening. What you need to release, Queen of Cups. Waiting for all that you have given to be given in return. Yes, temperance on that six of pentacles, six of pentacles, reciprocity, generosity, give and take. Queen of cups, I'm giving, giving, giving. Remember I said she might be coming through reversed, a little bit of a doormat, a little bit of enmeshment, over giving, over identifying, and patience of a saint. I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. I'm going to be patient, I'm going to be giving, I'm going to be giving, because I know that, you know, of course... Soon as, as they can, they'll give back and they don't. And there it is. Disappointment, disillusionment, rejection, unhappiness, 
this is what you need to release is that part where it's sort of like you've heard of the tipping point right malcolm gladwell's book the tipping point it's like when we reach that point where we've over i think he says it's 11 percent when something reaches like an i'm i'm generalizing now but we're you know and of course he's talking about it in a sociological perspective but let's just say if I overgive in a in a partnership situation, when I reach that critical point, and I think it's eleven percent. When I've overgiven by eleven percent, boom, I've hit the tipping point. It's never coming back to me. And therefore I've set myself up for this. And I know that sounds very clinical, Virgo in the house, that's what you get. But what I'm trying to say is then we're going into the overgiving. And so it becomes this perpetual cycle. And therefore, we're never going to see that tower coming. We're always going to have somebody walking away because they're getting their needs met. And they it's like, you know, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Have you ever heard that phrase? That is what I'm seeing here. It's a rude and crude phrase but it, i'm and i'm saying it for a reason because i'm not i'm not suggesting that you've been used but i'm suggesting that it is a uh, human nature that there are givers and there are takers and when there is the respect in the balance of it everything works when there's a disharmony when there's like i'm talking to libras y'all gotta understand this when when we get to that tipping point where something's gone over there we go then we've upset the natural cycle and balance in the situation and that's what i'm seeing here so we have to release the overgiving. we have to release the part of you that tends to say, I'm just going to give more and I'm just going to give more and then I'm just going to give more and I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait because I know it's going to come back to me. And then it doesn't. And in fact, not only does it not come back to you, it fucking walks away. I said it was a shadow reading. So now we're going to focus on the block. It's a shiny object block. It sounds nice. It sounds charming. It's flirtatious and it's alluring and yeah but it doesn't make you feel good it's sort of um it feeds you with one hand and then it rejects you with the other you know feeds you with one hand and then says you know you don't look good in that dress <laughs> Right? I swear to God, that's what I'm seeing here. Coming from King of Pentacles, there's rejection. There's, uh, you know, uh, devaluing on some level, things moving very slowly, never, the offer never really comes in. Your patience of a saint isn't really getting you the payoff. And so you internalize that message. And by the way, this has come through for almost every reading in this, in this section. So the block looks a little something like, it might sound good, but it's more like friends with benefits kind of a thing. It's more like um, someone who you think has your back, you think is invested, but it, it, they just know what to say. 
And so you don't get to the depth and the emotional um, evolution of the connection. You don't get the evolved person that you are really desiring, that you're hanging in there for, that you're invested in. You've got all the pages. And boy, this same thing came through, I think, for either Leo or Virgo, or maybe both of those. But it, it, it's coming through a lot in these readings is what, what it is you see in someone versus what it is you, you're really dealing with. So there's a block here, um, and I'm going to call it your shiny object block. You know, you're, you see something and you're not really um, seeing your own worth and value, so you stop with that. And you're not giving yourself the opportunity to pass on the shiny object, and so you go maybe to something that is a little too superficial. And that's the block, if that makes sense. So let's see what we need to forgive. Like different day, different sign, different decks, same messages. This nine of pentacles keeps coming out. I think it's you need to forgive yourself, right? And your perceived flaws. The nine of pentacles is a single person in the tarot. Um, lots, you know, she's the one that everyone looks up to. Um, but in her eyes, you know, she, she's independent and autonomous. Um, people see her as confident and, um, self-made and strong and, uh, somehow really connected to the law of attraction. So she's got that kind of aura about her. And yet for those of us that identify with the nine of pentacles in this sort of a setup where we're looking at forgiveness like what do we need to forgive it's like our flaws right i'm not good enough to be coupled people only want what they can take from me they give and give and give and i yet i'm still alone right i don't have anybody coming in you know for their grand homecoming to propose to me um, I'm giving and giving and nothing's coming back to me. I only get rejected. Uh, they, they say they want me, but then they treat me like something on the bottom of their shoe. Um, right. It's coming from our perceived, perceived imperfections instead of seeing what others really do see in us, the beauty the competence, um, the confidence, the, the capacity to, a, to attract really amazing things to ourselves, to, you know, our, our creativity, how much we can accomplish and have accomplished. So I, I feel like in this part of the reading, you need to forgive yourself for being so hard on yourself right you need to sort of recapture the dream you know reset your sights on your dreams and tr you know put reestablish re your trust faith and hope that the universe does have your back so forgive yourself for forgetting that reclaim second chances because they're there right the judgment card is about second chances answer the call through your own self-forgiveness second chances at what laura well happiness life love you know do-overs whatever fill in the blank for yourself um but it's all available to you you just kind of got to get off your own damn back 
and and see the beauty in yourself and all the things that everyone else sees in you instead of see, you know seeing yourself as damaged goods so that's what you need to forgive let's see the self-love three of cups <laughs> page of cups is there too yeah I sort of feel like um, with that self-forgiveness and that sweetness um, and sincerity of that page of cups, you know, do that whole forgiveness process with some good friends. Let them tell you the truth about who you really are. Right? I'm almost feeling like these two are morphed together. Because look at the sun there, the happiness, talking about your success, feeling safe and protected in your vulner vulnerability. Find two people. It's like you and two people, your closest people. If it's a sister, if it's a girlfriend, if it's your closest confidant, you know, the two, if you have, if you're fortunate, if it's your daughter, if it's your son, if it's, you know, whoever it is it can be by phone or zoom or something but if you're lucky enough to have two people that you can have this moment with where you can say okay guys i need like a major self-love forgiveness session and i need to do it with you around me and i need the truth i need y'all to come, <laughs> come to jesus moment with me or come to moses or, or allah or whoever I need to hear some truths. I need to forgive myself. I need like some laughter and tears and joy. And I need to feel safe. And you're the two people I feel safest with. And I need, need to come out of this with my heart intact. That's what you can do for yourself. I know. This one really gets me because it's, you know, such a Libra kind of a reading. Like you need your balance back, sure, and the harmony back, sure. But it's like you're, you're in this, your baggage is like, I don't understand this. I am literally clueless. What is happening here? I'm, manif I'm manifesting, manifesting, manifesting. And like, what is, why is this not happening? And and you're being hard on yourself about it. So we need to kind of reset that, okay? Really powerful reading for you, Libra. I told you it was gonna be a little bumpy, um, but it's bumpy for a reason. We're in eclipse season. We're releasing the past and all the freaking baggage that goes with it and the blocks and stuff. And um, in the extended, I'm going to focus on the connection you came here to watch about. So I'm not done with you yet. I want to look at your energy and their energy. I want to look at your block in that connection, not this one, in the connection itself. This was a general just for you. And then their blocks in the relationship. Then I'm going to look at the relationship. Then I'm going to give you divine guidance from spirit. I'm also going to look at how things might unfold going forward. So the extended is totally about just your connection um, with whomever is more current in your mind. Okay. This was more of a historic trip down memory lane. All right. And the links to that are below. There are three different ways you can access the extendeds. So please be sure you know what it is you're clicking um, the link to. All right. Okay, and if you are enjoying my readings or getting some insight, some self-awareness, feeling some validation, some confirmation, and you have not yet done so, please subscribe below. That is how you help me stay on this platform and do what I love to do most of all, which is to serve you and bring you these messages. So that would be so wonderful. Thank you in advance for that. I'm headed to the extended. I'll see you there in a second. Bye for now.